Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning is about uh, demolitions of shanties and illegal uh, settlements here in Lagos State. It's not the first time that we're hearing of things uh, uh, like this happening. The government, of course, uh, makes moves to ensure better living conditions and, of course, a safer environment of living for its residents. Um, in 2019, it happened. In 2020, it happened also. And, of course, uh, this year, uh, we are talking about the demolition of shanties along the uh, Moshodi Apapa Expressway. We've invited this morning Najib Bello, a social political analyst, to join us and share his thoughts on this. Good morning, Mr. Bello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for bringing me in. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. All right, so let's, uh, let's start with um, the demolition that is once again taking place. Um, over time, and even in previous uh, governments here in Lagos, there was major controversy over uh, demolitions and kicking people out of you know, their, their homes because the government felt the need to clear out those um, uh, settlements and those illegal structures. Um, they, of course, are described as uh, places that are built in the right of way of government, um, uh, the government's plan for the state. So let's get your thoughts on this one you know, once again. Do you agree you know, with the idea of having to demolish these shanties and, and these places in order to, of course, uh, have a saner environment for Lagos State? Oh, well, um, if um, structures are not built where they are supposed to be built, I, I think it's, uh, it's right for the government to, to, um, to take them out of that, those places. If they are obstructing traffic, we see this a lot where um, shops have been located on, uh, on walkways, sometimes so close to the roads that um, vehicles can hardly move. So if that is the case, uh, then, 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 then they should uh, demolish the, those shops that are on the road or on the walkways that are obstructing human or vehicular traffic. But then if it's uh, regarding something like a fire incident, a tanker, overturned tanker, or container truck, then we all know that this has nothing, it, this does not solve the problem at all. So we have to look at two, two different issues. If there are accidents or incidents that uh, cause fires and disrupt traffic and um, um, kill people, burn down shops, is the solution the is it is that the solution to demolish the shanties was it the shanties that caused a a vehicle to overturn so if in as much as we want them to develop lagos lagos has a development plan there's a lagos state development plan which i read every now and then to see they are not doing anything about that plan we we are talking to them trying to get them to to work on it, but they are not doing anything about that plan. So, if that is why they are, if that is why they are demolishing um, uh, shops, I, I think we should we should handle these two these things in two different forms. One, deal with the issue of dilapidated old 1980s, 1970s tankers on our road. Deal with the issues of terrible, very bad roads. Then, on the other hand, you can come and say you want to clear out uh, uh, shops that are on the roadside, shops that are on the walkways, you know. So there are two different things which I think can be done, okay. uh, but but not doing one thing to to act like you are trying to solve a bigger problem which has been there and continues to be there. Mr. Najib Bello, uh, we're aware that you've been a victim of this, you know, demolition in Lagos. Can you share your experience with us and uh, how challenging it was for you at the time? So, um, you see, there are, there are lots of issues in Lagos that um, one of the issues is that the land space in this state is very, there, there, there is what I call, in terms of density, we are overpopulated in terms of density in Lagos. Lagos is about the smallest state and about the most populated also. So land is very precious. So it's not surprising that every time there's an incident, people like to use it to chase out poor people, relocate poor people from precious land that they can, they can sell. So we had an issue um, 2010, which was... Uh, 
uh, erosion of the beaches in uh, uh, around the Lekki axis, VI Lekki axis, from Oniru Beach up to Alpha Beach, we had erosion, which was caused by the Equa Atlantic, refilling of the Equa Atlantic, you know. And when um, the government decided to take action, instead of them to say, okay, Equa Atlantic, how are you going about this thing? How do you ensure that while you are refilling this place, while you are claiming these lands, other lands are not lost. Instead of them to negotiate with, with the Equa Atlantic and the management, they came to the people who had bars, who had um, shops around the beaches, um, Oniru Beach, Alpha Beach, uh, even some parts of um, uh, Lekki Beach, you know, which was almost gone by then, and said it was those of us who had um, shops, who had bars, who had lounges in those places that we were the ones causing the beach to erode. It was the craziest thing I'd heard about that time, but um, we tried to talk to the commission, and at the end of the day, they asked us that they would have to demolish our shops if um, they are going to take any 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 action or we move our shops backwards we we demolish ourselves and and, and relocate further from the from the beach and um, myself and my team we decided to just leave the beach entirely other people relocated uh, they moved their shops they de um, dismantled their shops and moved and later on a few years later government came in and, and said oh they still had to demolish and they, they demolished their shops. So right. um, at the end of the day, it's not the real solution. There is still there is still erosion on those beaches. In fact, Alpha Beach is virtually gone right now. So it's not the real solution to the problem. It's just something as an opportunity to say, okay, to make it look like they are doing something, one, then to use the opportunity to claim land that they can use for something else or sell to someone else, it does right. not really uh, solve the below. problem. If a tanker, if a tanker fell down and um, spilled its content and there was fire, it cannot be, be because there was a shanty of shops. Yes, abso there are absolutely, but, but but let me let me ask uh, the the Lagos State government, of course, you know, has uh, declared these places illegal structures and um, you know said that they they you know of course are not you know meant to be places where people live or people do business. Um, so there might be, of course, uh, reasons, you know, because of the safety of those people, you know, that, you know, makes the government want to uh, kick them out of there. But I want your thoughts from 2010, when this, when you experienced this, um, till 2021 now, there's been multiple times when Lagos State government has had to demolish shanties or settlements um, and business places. Yes. Um, has there ever been a talk of um, actual resettlement for these people, compensation for these people? Um, or, an, or a plan, basically, to ensure that they don't suffer um, these uh, moves by the government? Okay. Um, I think when it comes to um, resettlement, compensation, I think we'll be talking about using those terms if people own the right to these lands. If you own the right to the place you are occupying and the government wants to remove you, in order to develop the state better, then perhaps they should compensate you, uh, they should help to relocate you, or they should relocate you. It's your right. But in, a, in an instance where you don't have any documentation to show that you, you, you own that land or you lease that land, then um, you lease that land from the rightful source, then government does not have a duty to relocate or compensate you. They can only help. They can only help. And whatever help they render, if they give you a, a, a bit of money to go look for somewhere else, if they um, find some other barren land in another location and say, okay, you can use this for a period of time while you try to get back on your feet, maybe a year or two, that is government trying to help, which I think they should do anyway, so that people don't go into crime People don't uh, die of um, different conditions, heart failure, high blood pressure. But then it is not the, your right as a shop owner. You come to the roadside, you mount, you, you, you put a container there. And um, when the government comes to, to remove you, you say, oh, they should compensate or relocate you. It's not your right. But then the government can do something 
to help. That's what I can say about that. All right. So Myself, when, I, when, when the government came, although we had um, rights from the owners of the land there, but then we discussed with them and said, oh, if we continue here, they will come back later and say this or that. So we left and we did not ask for any compensation or anything because um, uh, to some extent the government has the might to move and even change the laws. Even when you have the right to that land, they can revoke. They have um, laws that can make them revoke your right and say it's an okay. extraordinary condition and you know so so the government can help but it's not your right if you occupy land that you're not supposed to be on yes. and you set up a shop there or anything it's not your right for government to relocate it's not your right for government to pay you um, but government can help so okay. that okay um, miss abello i want us you. to i want us to really you know emphasize on how the government can help in this situation because you have lots of people maybe selling by the roadside or even selling in markets, you know, in the open market. And there's been lots of markets that have been demolished. There was a third generation market demolition, you know, after that fire in 2004, 2007. There was a Jankara market demolition. There was a Mushi, Ajinom market. There were so many markets that have been demolished. Traders who were selling, you know, in the open fields there, but they were demolished. You know, new ultra-modern markets were built. But then these markets became, you know, priced beyond their means. It's so expensive, they can't even afford to pay the rent. Let's talk about really what can the government do about this and how this might even be making in the, the hawking situation in Lagos even worse. Okay. Um, I will talk about um, something I personally handled, which was the demolition of um, Aladi Market in um, uh, Allen Avenue, Ikeja. Up till today, nothing is happening on that land where hundreds of people used to end their living. And they had, this is not, they were not on the roadside, they were not shanty shop owners. They were people who paid rent, they were people who built shops that government allotted space to and said, um, later came to say, oh, the time had expired. They were not on the roadside, they were not disturbing traffic. So, what government can do is, have a plan. You have a plan, the Lagos State Development Plan. Share this plan with people. They never talk about it. In fact, for us to even have that document, we had to, it was a foreign government that, that introduced me to that gov, um, document and say, oh, according to the Lagos um, Development Plan, we don't know what they are planning because they don't discuss it with us. They don't tell us. Now, if you have um, the Lagos State Development Plan and you need to make changes to the to, 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 the, to an environment or a market according to your plan. You come to those to the people there and you sit with them and explain something to them and say, okay, this is what the plan says. By 2022, we are supposed to have an ultra-modern 10-story um, store in this place. So we need to start doing this. What we will do is when we build those shops, all of you that are registered owners here, you would have your own shops in that um, event, uh, it, when, when that structure is completed. That's one way to go about it. Then they have, um, they can partner with the private sector and talk about when exactly that um, ultra modern market, as they call it, um, or that, that new, new store, when it's going to be ready. Uh, so that people know that, okay, if as they are taking my land, as they are demolishing my um, business right now, in two years time, I will have a shop that I can come back to. So let me go and look for what to do. I can even go to the bank. If government allots this to me and says, oh, um, take um, this is a, your own um, brain check, go and hold on to it in two years' time. You can go to a bank and tell the bank, oh, look at who. I have these documents and I need money to just rent a shop for like two years. But they don't give the people any, any plan. They don't give them any hope of what they are trying to do. They just come, they demolish, they chase away. And sometimes, like in the case of uh, Alade Market, I think Alade Market has been laying fallow. It's right there at the beginning of Allen Avenue. It has been laying fallow for about three years now. There's nothing happening. You just go there and you see that the shops have been demolished. There's nothing going on there. One time, the local, Ikeja local government tried to bring in some uh, private people and they ended up doing nothing if you did not have the plan on ground 
why would you be so in a hurry to go and demolish uh, uh, th those shops? So I think government, wow. the main help government needs to do is make people know from the very get-go, you cannot set up shop here. In Aja market now, you go around Aja, you see people have set up shops on the walkway where people are supposed to be walking. People are not supposed to be walking on the road. People so, walk so on Mr. The road Bello, it's, a, it's an issue of lack of communication or orientation of the people. That's what the issue yes. is. All right. I, I that, also... that, that's, that's, what the first, that's what the first problem is. You don't tell the people what they are to do, what they are not to do. And people are setting shops on the roadsides and you have... Um, some some thugs or touts wearing supposedly government issued um, uniforms. They come there, they collect taxes from these people, or they collect fees, daily fees from these people. And the people think that yes, they are supposed to be there. After all, they are paying some form of taxes. Then tomorrow you come and say, oh, you want to first and foremost make it impossible for people to set up shops where they are not supposed to set up shops. Right. Once you see let, one let or two alone. people putting their wares there, you let them know that you cannot stay here. Then secondly, the ones who have already established their shops, let them know your plan and say, no, according to our plan, especially the ones who have rightful ownership or rightful lease of a shop, whether it's near the, the road or it's inside a, a, a marketplace like the example of Alade Market, share your plan with them and let them know that this is why we have to do this and this is how you will benefit from it in the future. Set out a timeline which you are sure you will execute. All right. And um, ensure that you have everything on. in place so that when they come back in a year or two, you built your 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 your, your shopping complex, your ultra modern shopping complex. Oh, and unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of times these people can't afford those ultra modern uh, shopping complexes. That's why they stay by the roadside. But I, I want to go back to October 2020. Um, for the first time, maybe you know ever, we saw. Um, what happened at, you know, at the end, the tail end of the NSARS protest, where there was a lot of these young, jobless, um, you know, they were described as miscreants then, but they were young, jobless Lagosians who took advantage of the lack of security and the lack of control of Lagos at that time and went ahead to create the biggest chaos Lagos has probably ever experienced. Um, yes. Demolishing, you know, these shanties and these settlements and these places where they live, because I'm, I'm sure you would also expect that this is, these are the locations where these people stay. Um, doesn't that create, you know, more chaos security-wise for Lagos? Um, of course, there is, there is a way to look at things that would show us that when you when someone is running a business and you run them out of business with force, they may have to resort to other means of survival. Now, that being said, it does not mean we should tolerate some form of illegality or irregularity in our state. Now, I was at Alaba Market um, last week. I was at Alaba Market and there's a small bridge, there's a small U-turn bridge, is like 500 meters, and there are thugs and touts there who collect money. Let's remember that before May mayhem was unleashed on Lagos, some thugs and touts had already blocked the inner roads and other places that you would use to, 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 to divert from traffic. And they were collecting tolls at those places. It's those people that they were emboldened after the government did nothing about them. They were emboldened to go and start robbing and stealing and attacking. Now, I, my experience in Alaba market, there are people who collect tolls on the road who are not supposed to be collecting tolls. These are just thugs. They have no, no relation with government. They have nothing. They just come there and they mount. So if we don't deal with those people, if we don't take those people out of our, our roads, then also the Lagos State um, um, LSETF, they have the Endowment Trust Fund or, or what they call it, that they use to say, okay, if you don't have a job, come and get some training, come and do this and that. That is one of the main ways. And this thing has been around since the days of Cambodia. I think it's been around since maybe... 2016, the LSETF, and they've gradually, very slowly been trying to um, um, give funding to individuals, to small businesses. If they have moved faster 
they would have been able to get maybe hundreds of thousands of these unemployed youths off the street. But they move so slowly, and unfortunately, it has become a political party thing where you want to um, register for the LSETF, and they're asking you where you belong, where your party card, or some other things like that. But if they had meant well, like the plan originally was, the originally in the first two years, the LSETF was doing well. They were, they were getting young people, register, train them, give them some, some, some loan or some kind of funding at low interest rates, and let them go establish. So that's the kind of thing I think we should see. Right. I know so a lot of times it's difficult for them to afford this job as the Tejo Show complex has become. And government is not ready to, to yield and understand that the, they cannot afford these shops. And the shops cannot even give them the necessary returns. If you are taking a shop in Tejo Show Market for, for 10 million naira, and you know that annually you make 9 million naira, it does not make sense to you. So the government right. has to calculate and say, okay, if we are building this complex, let's understand how much these people make in the first place. Let's understand how people can earn or, or how we can improve their earnings if we are going to sell these shops to them at so, 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 so prices. So that's what they need to do. They need to engage people properly. Then, like I said, there are other people that are just completely jobless in this Lagos. There are probably about 2 million of them. So that's, this one has nothing to do with demolishing shanties. It has nothing to do with um, shops on the roadside. These people, are, they have nothing to do. All right. So the uh, government should try and employ their LSETF, get these people engaged, enlighten them, train them, give them some funding to start the kind of business that they can do that will stop okay. them from tolling roads and causing all sorts of problems, robbing people in traffic. All right, Mr. Najib Bela. So basically, the, the key takeaway is for Lagos State to develop an inclusive development policy that also accounts for the yes. needs, you know, considers the needs of the poor people in its, you know, its redevelopment initiatives, basically. Yes, it's, it's very important. Right. And like I said, they already have a document. They already have the Lagos State Development Plan. They need to keep sharing it with the people. They need to keep telling people that you have to understand that this is where we are going. All right. That's why we can't do this. That's why we have to do that. So All that's right. the, the, the primary thing. Finally, um, I also want to ask you briefly uh, my, uh, from the news uh, report. It says they were given two weeks notice. Do you think that was good enough? Uh, um, for someone who has been on that, um, on that path, the, the truth is that... Um, we hear that they give them warnings every now and then. Mm? But one of the things I can say is that um, the warnings are not clear enough. They are not even justified. Reasons are not given. When you come and tell people, oh, leave this place, two, two weeks is not enough. You make your warning stand, and maybe you put a, a billboard or a large banner there to let them know that this is the time you will leave and you have to leave by this time. But two yes. weeks is not enough for someone who has been selling, even, even though illegally, you know, I'm trying to balance this thing, even though without necessary government approvals or without owning the land or anything, for someone who may have been selling for two years or so, the minimum you could give that person to leave is like three months. You All know, right. that's, that's what I take from there. But you have to make sure your warnings are well documented and very stern and direct. You All don't right. just whisper it to the traders and, and, and expect them to, to obey. Thank you very much, uh, Najib Bello. Um, we, of course, well, um, wish the well, those persons at the uh, Oshodia Papa Road well, and we hope that they can always also find um, other ways to settle and to and continue to do business. Najib Bello, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me in again. All right, have a, a fantastic day. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we're taking a short break, of course. And when we come back, we're talking uh, Zero Discrimination Day and what it means here in Nigeria. How relevant is it in the conversation with regards COVID-19 as people are clamoring to get the COVID-19 vaccine? How important is it that the Nigerian government uh, takes the details of Zero Discrimination Day into uh, perspective here? Yes. Yeah, so stay with us. We'll be right back.